CIEP stands for Chronic Inflammatory Demyelinating Polyradiculoneuropathy. It is a chronic disorder affecting the peripheral nerves and the nerve roots. It is characterized by inflammation and demyelination. The diagnosis is difficult because the etiology remains largely unknown and there is no diagnostic gold standard. So the, the first version of this guideline goes back to 15 years and then there was a first revision more than 10 years ago, now in 2010. There is indeed a need to revise this uh, guideline because um, basic and clinical research has progressed uh, quite a bit over the time. And so there are new data. And this means that we now have a better understanding about uh, CIDP and its treatment. And uh, another element that might be important is that we are, have developed this guideline according to state-of-the-art methodology, which is called GRADE. CIDP is a container concept for a number of heterogeneous neuropathies with as common denominator inflammation and demyelination. Typical CIDP affects the four extremities, proximally and distally, and it leads to motor and sensory deficit. It is the most common form of CIDP. Other forms of CIDP are distal, multifocal, focal, motor, and sensory. We used to call these atypical CIDP, but really they are CIDP variants because each of these variants has well-defined characteristics. So the term atypical is not really appropriate because these, these entity each has its typical characteristics. Now, what has transpired over the uh, over the years is that misdiagnosis of CIDP is uh, common. And misdiagnosis seems to uh, concern mainly the CIDP variants. And for that reason, in this guideline, we have uh, put a lot of attention into uh, redefining and refining criteria for the uh, various uh, for these various forms. Uh, we used to have three diagnostic categories, possible, probable, and definite CIDP. Because the, there is insufficient distinction between probable and definite CIDP, we have reduced the levels of diagnostic certainty from three to two. This means possible CIDP and CIDP. What we also did is abandon um, the adjective definite, since in the absence of a gold standard for the diagnosis, it is not really allowed. Now, the diagnosis depends on fulfillment of clinical and electrodiagnostic criteria. And therefore, electrodiagnosis is strongly recommended. And it is the strength of the uh, electrodiagnostic evidence, supportive of the demyelination, that defines the diagnostic category, possible CIDP or CIDP. If uh, by using electrodiagnostic techniques, the diagnosis can only be confirmed for possible CIDP, fulfillment of two supportive criteria upgrades the diagnosis to CIDP. And we can use four supportive criteria. There is objective response to treatment. There is imaging, especially ultrasound. There is spinal fluid analysis, and there is nerve biopsy. Some patients do have clinically typical CIDP, but they do not fulfill minimal electrodiagnostic criteria. In these patients, if there is an objective response to treatment, and if there is fulfillment of at least one other um, supportive criterion, the diagnosis can be possible typical CIDP, but the diagnosis cannot be upgraded to CIDP.